Good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel. Today I am on my way to take Copa J to get spayed and I am so sad. I'm going to take you guys along on the process of everything that we do. All the pre-op, post-op. Copa J is 11 months old. She will turn one on December 3rd. Today is November 18th. A week before the surgery, our vet calls to go over everything with us. She's a month out from her heat cycle, so we should be fine. Our estimate was between like $498 and $582. And then they just ask you during the surgery if God forbid something happened, do we have your permission to do whatever we need to do to save her? Of course I said yes. I don't care. I will sell my house. I will sell my leg. I will sell anything I need to sell to pay for that vet bill. I don't care. Do we need to do I don't know if everybody does that, but our vet at least does that for us, which I really like. Now I'm on my way, like I said, to drop her off. Drop off is between 7.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning. It is now 7.28, so that's the update for now. I'm not excited, I'm very sad, I don't like this. And then I'm only working till noon, so that way I can have the afternoon off. And then I also took tomorrow off as well, just so that I can take care of her. All right, so I'm leaving to go pick her up, and I just put down a blanket for her in the passenger seat, and then I brought her snuggle puppy as well for her to cuddle up with on the ride home. On my way to pick up the baby girl, it is 1.36 and I need to pick her up around 2. I did talk to the vet earlier. They called me around 10 o'clock just saying that everything went well and Copa is doing good. She's recovering well. I just needed to call them back to schedule a pickup time and to go over the post-op instructions with them. So I called them back and they went over everything with me. Basically, she just can't run, jump, do anything crazy for 10 to 14 days and and this morning when I was going over everything, it sounded horrible in the car. So I'm going to try to explain it a little bit better now. But basically last night I just had to give her two tablets of Serenia before she went to bed. It was with her dinner and it just helps with pre and post op nausea. And then this morning I was able to give her a third of what she normally has for food. She was so hungry. Obviously she's used to getting her normal amount so only having a third of that she was starving. So she kept like pacing and wandering around the house trying to find more food and I felt bad because she probably thought that I was trying to starve her. This morning I took her to the vet. I dropped her off. She loves the vet. Anywhere there's people involved she loves it so she walked right in. She's all excited and I felt so bad because she had no idea obviously what was going to be coming and I was a basket case. The whole ride to work I just remember bringing large home and just the sad look on her face like the little whimpers that she makes oh my gosh I can't stand seeing my baby in pain and I just wish I could just pull it out of her and like put it in me instead so that way she didn't have to feel it then I went to work they called me this morning everything thankfully went pretty well now I'm just on my way to go pick her up and then I will explain more of what to do post-op and going over costs and everything whenever we get home and I have all the paperwork to go over so it makes it a lot easier and then I will show you this sweet baby girl. I cried so many times this morning already and one of my patients is just the sweetest person in the whole world. She brought me in some flowers and she brought me a little gift bag and she wrote me a card and just thinking of me with all the stuff I have going on. Like I feel like I share a lot of stuff with you guys but there's so much more going on that you don't know. So I just really really appreciated it. I was really sweet. I don't think honestly anyone's ever done anything that nice for me. You just never know how much your kindness is so incredible needed by certain people at certain times and it just really makes a big difference in their lives. You really do never know what someone is going through. Like they can look like they're perfectly fine and happy and healthy and X, Y, and Z, but in reality their life can be totally different. All right, made it to the vet. I'm just waiting for her to come out. It's all right, Coco. It's okay. Yeah, we're gonna just go home and snuggle. Okay, it's gonna be just fine. Okay, mommy, love you. Here, you want your puppy? There you go. Here you go. She's just been snuggling her snuggle puppy the whole way home so far. 
Every time I stop, she lifts her head up because she thinks that we're home. Not yet, baby girl. We're almost there. I know, Coco Bean. Mommy's so sorry. I don't like to see you sad. You want to try a little bit of lunch? Good girl, Coco. Is that enough? Do you need a drink? You okay, Coco? Let me go and get you some water, okay? Do you want a drink? No? No drink? Okay, she has to go outside. So I'm gonna go outside real quick. She can't do any stairs. So I have to carry her. Are you gonna push? Good girl, Coco. What's the food? I need a little bit more food. I'm gonna go get sissy, okay? You can't play though. Be nice. Be nice. You gotta be gentle, remember? You gotta be gentle with her. Larcy, remember she can't play with you. You okay, Coco? It's okay. I know, it's okay, Coco. Aww. You wanna go snuggle? Let's go snuggies on the couch, okay? Okay, so it's now the next morning. I didn't film anything else last night. Honestly, I just spent the next four or five, maybe even more hours cuddling her. Anytime I would stop cuddling her, she would start crying. I couldn't get up. I couldn't do anything. I literally had to just keep snuggling her. So when my husband got home and he got showered, he took over for a little bit so that I could get a couple things done. Just got a shower. I did my little Peloton ride and I just did some dishes just because we just really we could not put her down without her starting to cry. So obviously I wasn't going to put her down to pick up the camera to film and I'm not going to film her while she's crying but that's how basically it went. Last night just lots and lots and lots of cuddles, constant attention. This is her right here and she just let out like little random whimpers which Larcy did that too even though we were snuggling her but she would make it very consistent if we like took our hands off of her. Then when it was time to have dinner, she ate her food just fine, but she still was refusing to drink water. She didn't have any water for lunch. She didn't have anything all afternoon and she didn't have anything at night for dinner. So I was like, you know, she can't not drink anything. I don't know what to do. And she was starting to pant. She was starting to breathe really heavy and her heart rate, I can tell, was getting faster. So I just looked in our emergency vet bag and I found this syringe. So what I did is I just filled it full of water and then I slowly gave it to her. I would give her a little bit on her tongue or I'd stick it in the back of her mouth and a little bit would dribble out. But for the most part, she did pretty good with it. I just, like I said, went really, really slow with her just to make sure she wasn't choking. I think three syringefuls but I waited like 10-15 minutes between each so that I wasn't overwhelming her too much and then she calmed down and her heart rate kind of slowed down a little bit she wasn't so like panty breathing heavy so I think it helped a little bit and then last night the sleeping situation was a little bit different normally we all sleep together but with her having her incision I was worried about Larcy licking it because she's been very curious about it. She keeps smelling it. She keeps going over to it and I know she's just curious but I don't want her to lick it for Koba. So I put the donut on Koba so that she couldn't lick it and then I basically just made this little barricade around the corners of the bed. So this was our little setup last night. I have a comforter just for me that I grabbed and then I gave her our normal comforter and then like I said I just kind of puffed up the edges to make it like little bumpers all the way around. This is the donut that we have 
have to just put around her at night. Just wrap a collar through it. It's a lot more comfortable than the big cone. And then of course we had to have her snuggle puppy. Luckily she's been doing really good at not licking the incision site. So I've only actually had this on her at night. And then I just kind of curled up on the other side so that she had this little like circle. My husband slept out here on the couch and brought Larcy with him so that, you know, Larcy didn't feel left out. She had daddy all to herself. I had Koba all to myself. I didn't have to worry about Larcy licking the wounds or anything. It seemed to go okay. Getting to bed was really challenging. I just feel like Koba couldn't get comfortable, which I thought she was just gonna crash because she didn't sleep at all yesterday. But no, when it came to going to bed, she just kept crying and crying and crying. And I kept trying to snuggle her and make her feel comfortable. And I was trying to pet her. And like this second I would actually like nod off, she would start crying. And I'd wake up, I'd pick her up, cuddle her a little bit, give her some pet, she'd calm back down. As soon as I went to bed, she'd lift her head up, start crying. It took a little bit to get to sleep, but we did it. She's been going potty just fine. No straining, no issues there. She's still letting me know when she needs to go. She had breakfast just fine. Same thing, she refused to drink. I got the syringe back out and I gave her a syringe full of water, just one, because she wasn't really panting or anything at that point, just so she had something in her system. And then I took her outside to go potty. And then I literally, I just brought them in from going potty. And I was going to call the vet and tell them that she's not drinking water and just making sure that I'm doing the right thing. Or is there something different that I should be doing for her and literally I got done <laughs> cleaning off Larcy's paws. I go over to start doing Koba's paws. I turn around and she goes over to her water dish and she starts drinking the water. Luckily I guess she's back to drinking water now which is good but I'm just making sure to pick her up when we go down the steps to go outside because she can't do any stairs and then I pick her back up to come up the stairs whenever she needs to come inside the house and she's been doing pretty good with that with stopping and letting me pick her up. I purposely make them stop at the top of the steps anyways when we go outside just so that way when it's icy out they don't pull me down the steps so she's kind of already used to stopping at the top. It's just stopping at the bottom to come back up. She's not really used to that part. As for medications, this is what I had to give her the night before. It's called Serenia. 24 milligrams, two tablets by mouth the evening prior to the surgery. Surgery. And then at dinner last night, we had to give her a different medication. Give one tablet orally once every evening until gone for pain and swelling. And we had to start it last night. So this is 100 milligrams of carprofen. We just buried the pill in her food and thankfully she ate it just fine. Let's go over the bill. The total cost was $498, which was the low end of our estimate. It would have been more expensive if they would have still noticed signs of her being in her heat cycle. Four tabs of carprofen was zero dollars. The microchip, we did opt to have her microchipped just like we did with Larcy. That was fifty nine dollars. Free anesthesia was $33.08. The IV catheter was $39.69. The IV anesthesia was $44.65. The inhalation anesthesia was $62.85. The surgical IV fluids was $26.46. The surgical monitoring via the bayonet was $29.77. The OHE K9 spay for 40 to 80 pounds, which she's, I think, 49 pounds right now right now was $107.50. They did a nail trim at no charge and then the pre-op blood work which we elected to have was $95. So I wanted to have that done obviously just to make sure that everything was okay before they go do the surgery on her. And I was a little bit concerned about the masses underneath her nipples. I didn't know if that was something that was normal or not so I just wanted to make sure that that wasn't anything to worry about. It's only $95. I'd rather be, you know, obviously safe than sorry. And they did say that the lumps underneath her nipples were normal. That's just what happens after their heat cycle. I did have $75 on our Zoetis card. So the actual out-of-pocket expense that I had to pay was $423. And then going over post-op instructions. Her activity level has to be restricted for several days. She can be taken outside on a leash only. Do you see this right now? Larcy's so mad that Koba is in her spot. She was like trying to sit on her. Are you upset that Sissy's in your spot? She always lays on that side of the couch, so she's like very upset right now. Walks should be limited to just bathroom breaks for at least 10 days. She can't really be super active for the first 10 to 14 days. We have to minimize and discourage running, jumping, and stair climbing. She cannot have a bath. Now she's just gonna lay perched up on the arm because she's so upset.
Baths are not permitted for the first two weeks following surgery. Keep the dog dry and clean during the recovery period. I can't get the incision site wet. So they said to just keep checking the incision site every morning and every night. Check for any redness, swelling, or discharge. And if we notice any of that, to call them right away and let them know. If she starts licking it excessively and we don't catch her right away, we have to give them a call. They said it's normal if she has a smaller appetite than normal for the first one to two days following the anesthesia. Where are you going, baby girl? She loves her food, so I was not surprised at all that she was still very interested in eating. It may take several days for normal bowel habits to return, which like I said, luckily everything has been totally normal since bringing her home. She may have a mild sore throat and a cough the next few days following surgery. We have not noticed any of that. Please call us if you notice any signs of vomiting, diarrhea, loss of appetite for more than two days or extreme lethargy. No sutures need to be removed and she does not need to be rechecked unless we know a problem. So I just had to sign all that paperwork when I picked her up. And then information about the microchip. So like I said, we did choose to have both of the girls. Honey, you need to relax. She's getting a lot more active today than she was yesterday. With the microchip, we get a little tag with their microchip number just in case they were ever to be lost. So we just received the paperwork for that. I just have to go on the website and register her and just make sure that all of our information is correct. They have a little keychain that you can put on your key ring and then they also give you a card you can keep in your wallet. Overall, way better than I expected. She seems to be doing okay. She is just being very, very needy, very snuggly, which she normally is, but obviously right now she's being a little extra needy and snuggly, which is totally fine. Basically, whatever she needs, I'm here for her and I will do my best to make her comfortable and hopefully heal as soon as possible. You doing okay, Coco? Yeah, see, I just feel a little funny. Yeah, look at that little tail flapping. You a good girl, Coco? <laughs> yeah, you a good girl, Coco. You already know you a good girl. She keeps laying on her back and wanting me to rub her belly, but obviously I can't really rub her belly right now, so I've just been rubbing her chest. But she's just so sweet. And this is Big Sissy over here. I feel really bad because she's been feeling really left out and I hate that but at the same time I don't want to like start throwing her ball and stuff for her because if she starts running and playing then Cope is going to want to start running and playing. We're all in this together. We're just going to do what we need to do to make our little baby girl feel better, right? So it is now Saturday morning. I am working on editing the video right now but I just wanted to give one last quick little update. She did really good yesterday. Last night when she had to take her medicine she ate everything but the pill so I had to shove it in a raspberry and then stick another raspberry on the other end to hide it and luckily she took the pill just fine. Last night she had a hard time getting to bed again just kept moving around could not get comfortable. I put her donut back on which I know she doesn't like but she did decide to jump off the bed in the middle of the night so I definitely panicked about that. <laughs> luckily she is just fine. I just got off the phone with the bat. They just called me this morning just to make sure that everything was going well with her just to check in and I told them that she is doing pretty good as of now. That is our spay experience with our golden retriever. Hopefully you did find this helpful. I tried to be as informational as I possibly could be just to hopefully help you if you're going through the process or if you are just curious. If you did find this helpful make sure you let us know by hitting the thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed please feel free to do so and as always we will see you in the next video. Bye guys!